What's going on guys? So today we are out here at Ron Hoover RV and Marine in Rockport, Texas. They carry an enormous selection of RVs, some motorhomes, and a lot of boats. I think they're one of the largest RV and boat dealerships in the state. Anyways guys, today we are going to look at this really huge, this is an enormous Riverstone fifth wheel from Forest River. Hang tight, I'll be right back. So you were looking at the Forest River Riverstone 39 RBFL. This is a 2020 model. This thing has an MSRP of $138,500. So it's a relatively pricey unit. And there's a lot of reasons for that. There's a lot of things that differentiate a Riverstone from your traditional fifth wheel. And we'll cover some of those in this video. Let's take a look at the numbers on this fifth wheel. So this has a relatively heavy gross vehicle weight rating of 19,085 pounds. It has a cargo capacity of 2,404 pounds. It rides on twin 8,000 pound axles and 17.5 inch H rated tires. This is a big boy. This is something you definitely want to tow with a dually pickup truck. I would not recommend towing this with a single rear wheel truck at all. It has an upgraded front pin box. This rides with the Air Ride Trail Air from LCI airbag pin box. Basically it has this airbag right here and it provides some dampening to the shock whenever you're towing it down the road that the front of the fifth wheel would normally transfer directly to the truck. This has hydraulic level up landing gear system from LCI. Coming around this does ride on a drop frame as well. What is a drop frame? If you've watched my other videos you'll know it's simply a I-beam that's attached to the main span of I-beam going from the front to the back. So you have your I-beam right here which is your main beam and then you have this part that drops down which is your drop frame. The reason why manufacturers put drop frames on fifth wheels is because it gives you more storage space. So when you open the front storage, you'll see that it's flat. There's nothing protruding up into this space because the drop frame drops below the floor. Now, something that's very unique with Riverstone and a few other manufacturers is a structural frame that surrounds the basement storage. So on many fifth wheels, you're gonna see aluminum structure up here. And that aluminum structure is not structural to the body of the fifth wheel. It's structural just to the floor section that's directly above it. All of the weight of the fifth wheel rests on on the frame section and how it transitions up to the front where the fifth wheel connection is. On a Riverstone as well as some other brands like Lux and DRV, they make this section structural to the body as well. So even though this has an eight inch drop frame section, all of this steel bracing up here is designed to be part of the structural component of the frame of the fifth wheel, which means this is gonna have a more robust frame than many of the fifth wheels on the market. And that's what you get when you pay a little bit more. As you start approaching that $100,000 price point and you go over it, you want to see things Things like a structural frame like that. You can see it has the thicker baggage doors. They're also heavier because this is a higher density material and it insulates a little bit better. You have dual 40 pound propane tanks. So this is an area that again, when you get to your higher end fifth wheels, you start to see larger propane tanks. It gives you more fuel for full-time livers who might be traveling all over the place and need more propane without having to worry about filling up all the time. Moving back a little bit, taking a look at the frame. Again, this is a 12 inch I-beam main beam section. You have the eight inch section, which drops down beneath it, giving you the drop frame. And then of course you have the structural supports that make up the area over the storage compartment or the basement storage. All rack and pinion slides in the back. Up front, you're gonna see Schwintech slides. Very good slide system technology. Again, right here, your very thick baggage doors with nice gas arm, and you have an outside TV here as well. Moving back, you have your Moride step above step system. Again, your auto leveling system. This does not have the upgraded Goodyear tires. These are running H-rated Westlake tires. So it's still a good tire. You definitely shouldn't compare some of the cheaper Westlake tires you get on travel trailers and lighter fifth wheels to these H-rated tires that you're getting on here. These are a 17 and a half inch wheel. And this is just a very robust setup, believe it or not. Runs the Dexter Easy Flex suspension system with the greasable wet bolts and the thicker heavy duty shackle straps. Coming back, you're gonna see a lot of storage underneath 
the floor here. They've elevated this back section to give you more storage. Again, everything is these thick, heavy baggage doors. Again, more pass-through storage. You just get a tremendous amount of storage on this fifth wheel. All frameless windows. You can see you have two awnings. And then you have slide top awnings on the front slide, but I don't see them on this slide, which is kind of interesting. Probably the reason for that is because they put these massive awnings that cover pretty much everything from the front to the back, almost all the way to the back, honestly. You can see this has a full fiberglass rear cap, all LED lighting. It has the Furion wireless backup camera already installed. And this has a two inch receiver on the back. Again, this receiver is designed for an accessory rack. It is not designed to tow with. Very nice though. Back here, you're gonna see your electric cord reel. More access to your storage. This is all that pass through storage in the back. Here's the back of your Truma AquaGo instant hot water heater. Very nice. Back of your furnace. They also give you some really nice lighting on this side as well. So you have a scene light out here whenever you're connecting at night. You can actually illuminate the area and not have to worry about bumping your head, hopefully. Coming to the other side of your storage, you have your pure sine wave 1500 watt go power inverter back here, your battery disconnect, and also the controls for your auto leveling system. You know, sometimes when you buy a new fifth wheel or when you're walking the lot, you'll see sawdust and stuff like this on the floor. And that's very common. It generally is going to work itself loose from any cracks and crevices that you couldn't get to with a vacuum while this thing's going down the road from Elkhart or Goshen, Indiana. And this stuff is all always cleaned up by the dealership before you buy it. They're going to vacuum that stuff out. But it's something that you should just kind of expect to see if it hasn't gone through your pre-delivery inspection yet. Here's a floor access to get to all your hydraulics, which is really nice. So they give you a really nice out of the way storage that's protected and you can just access it whenever you need to. Here is going to be your battery bank. You can store up to four batteries in here, two right here and two up here. These slide out as well to easily service your batteries. Give you a lot of capacity. And you can just see how thick this door is and where the cutout is, you can see the foam here. Very high density foam that they use. One thing that's really nice about this specific fifth wheel is that it came equipped with the Furion surround camera system. So you have three cameras that help you view what's going on while you're driving. One on each side and one on the back. And then you also have an additional side camera that you can use over the door for security reasons. But that is really cool that this already has the cameras installed at the front corners so you can see down the side whenever you're driving or towing. They definitely come in handy when you're parking it or when you're trying to back this in because it allows you to see the blind side or the blind spot of your fifth wheel whenever you're backing it into a spot or storage. And it's good to see that it's technology you're starting to see included on some of your higher end fifth wheels. Up front, this is a heavy, heavy baggage door. You can see you have a place for a generator. You have more of your hydraulic pump system there and your front storage space. That is a very, very heavy door. You can latch it up right there though so you don't have to hold it. Let's take a look inside of this fifth wheel. So climbing up into this 39 RBFL. This is a very nice screen door. Very, very different from most screen doors you see. This feels more like a residential style screen door. So as we step inside, you can see this is a front living room mid kitchen model has a very nice dinette area. This actually slides out to give you more room, and there should be two chairs in the closet in the bedroom that you can use to seat four people here. Very, very nice layout. This is one of those infinity lights. When you turn it on, it looks like the light goes on forever. This has three air conditioning units, one up front, one in the center here, and one in the master bedroom, and they are all whisper quiet units. This has some very nice residential appliances as well. A Samsung French door style refrigerator, very nice convection microwave from Samsung, and a beautiful looking residential style stove and oven. That is very nice. Plus, that is real tile. Nice Corian solid surface countertops. Again, more tile. The flooring is all hand-laid vinyl tile as well. Plus all of your fixtures are residential grade fixtures. 
Lots of storage. They even put storage underneath the steps. Lots of cabinets. A good amount of countertops, though I think they could have probably incorporated a little bit more countertop space because there's not a lot of it. So you have a little bit next to the stove. You have some right here for a coffee station. Your island is pretty much dedicated to the sink and you have a small space right here. I kind of feel they could have perhaps made this space a little bit longer because they give you so much other space as it is. And back here is gonna be a half bath. So you have a half bath, sink, and toilet, but your laundry room's in here. And that's actually kind of cool, actually, just to place that out of the way. It's not taking up space in the bedroom, and this is traditionally dead space, but that is a pretty cool location to put the laundry. Now, what would have been nice is if you can opt to not have that here and put a small shower in here, so if you have guests with you, it's a separate shower system, and then maybe put the laundry station inside of the bedroom as an option. Very tall ceiling heights. Coming up into the front living room area. It has two love seats that can open up into beds and pretty much turn this whole front area into a large bed. Theater seating right here. It has about six foot three inches worth of space. A lot of people wonder how I know that. Well, I've measured enough of them and I've been in enough of these that you pretty much can determine what the ceiling height is after you spend some time in it. Looks to be a 55 inch TV on a televator. So that will lower into this countertop area whenever you just want to look out the window, which is on the other side of it. You have a very wide fireplace, sound bar, entertainment system. Plus this has solar panels on it already. Currently providing 13.6 volts worth of power to the battery system. Very nice valances, day night roller shades on all of them. This is a beautiful, beautiful fifth wheel. Stepping down, you can see here just how well the day shades work whenever you want some privacy. I mean, they do a tremendous job of blocking out light. And then these shades, pull these down, and it blocks the light out completely. So if you want pure privacy at night, you drop those. That way none of the light from the inside makes it easy for people to see from the outside. Or if you just want to sleep in. Very nice fixtures, plus the bulbs are LED bulbs. You're starting to see that be just standard on most of your fifth wheels now where everything is LED, which is great because they pull such a smaller amount of current and they allow your batteries to last longer. King size bed, a lot of room on this side. This is not something I expected to see. You have a tremendous amount of room to get on the bed from that side. And on this side, you still probably have about 14 inches. A lot of headroom here. You can see the Whisper Quiet AC unit return air ducts up here. And a huge bathroom. I mean, the bathroom space is massive. It's very, very nice. One piece shower system. It has your controls here to the fantastic vent above, so you can control the airflow in here and humidity and kind of suck it all out, but that's really nice. It has a very, very nice sink area, dual basin sink. And they use, again, this wallpaper on the back that is kind of indicative of Riverstone. And it's just beautiful. I mean, they just set this up very nice and well. This is a good size bathroom, and it's definitely one that people would expect if a couple plans on full-timing it in this, and they want to have a coach that gives you some of that residential feel. Now, over here, you have your dresser at the end, some more drawers, some more storage, as well as a large fireplace. And right here, which is really cool, is storage area for keys or whatever you might want to put here and it kind of tucks it out of the way and hides it from prying eyes or people that might come in here. Plus you have a good size 36 inch TV directly above this dresser area and a nice seating area here if you need to put your shoes on or you need to do something that you want to sit down you have that. Plus of course there's going to be more storage underneath the bed. Taking a look at your closet storage space you got a good amount of storage space here there's a little divider right here that you can still hang some stuff, but then there's more storage on the other side. So you have another rod on the other side and it's a fair amount of wardrobe storage. Plus you have the end tables next to the bed that don't protrude out over the bed, which I really like. Overall, this is a very nice fifth wheel. So this fifth wheel is gonna have an MSRP of about $136,000. You could probably expect to pay a little over $100,000 for something like this. But in my opinion, 
Riverstone is probably the best value, the best construction, and the best features you can get in that price range. There's really not much else that competes directly against it in that price range. It's gonna be about 30 grand less than a DRV, and it's gonna be probably around 50 to 60 grand less than a Lux. You're not gonna get some of those custom touches. You're not gonna have the very, very structural frame that DRV has, but the frame on this is very similar to what you would get on a Lux. There are a few differences, but overall, this is a good, good unit to get into if you have, again, a budget of around 100 to $110,000 and you're trying to get into a full-time rated fifth wheel, especially one that utilizes three inch thick sidewalls. A lot of fifth wheels, even in that higher price point, have inch and a half thick sidewalls. Only a few can claim to have the three inch sidewall. The lowest price option you get with three inch sidewalls, I believe are gonna be an open range. But in this category with what you get with this coach, with a lot of the upgrades you get, this is actually one of the best values. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't had a chance, I'd appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up. Take a moment, subscribe to my channel, turn on notifications, and we'll talk to you again very soon.